Hello, everyone. Welcome to our event, Glacier Retreat in response to climate change, using novel tools to assess impacts. I'm Yulia Vistavna from Isotope Hydrology Section, International Atomic Energy Agency. To start this event, please let me to present the first speaker, Johannes Kuhlmann, Vice Chair of UN Water. So he will open our event and will answer the question, why we should concern about the glacier melting. Yeah, thank you, Julia. Hello, everybody. I'm happy to speak here for UN Water. We are coordinating the activities in the UN system around water and glacier melt is so important to address because it provides so much water for so many services that people are using. And at the moment, we take that for granted. We take that for granted in Europe, downstream of the Hindukush Himalaya or of the Andes or of Rocky Mountains or wherever we live. And we have a colleague from Tajikistan here today who will certainly say something about the importance of glacier melt uh, for the economies in Central Asia. So glacier melt is in many regions of the world today, basically in it, the water that we get from the cryosphere is partially a non-renewable resource because our climate boundaries are changing. So we need to stop thinking that water is for granted and we need to start accepting that water is a non-renewable resource in some aspect. We will have panelists discussing about that, I think, and I am happy to uh, have that event today in this pavilion because knowing how old water is in our natural environment is an integral and super important part of trying to propose measures that increase the resilience. So we need to know how long is water in the ground, how long is water in our surface water systems or in the cryosphere to understand what are the uh, green or gray infrastructure or natural nature-based systems that we can design now that will be effective maybe in 50 years. You can build a dam in a couple of years, but you cannot change a land use system in five years so that it will store water in a different way or protect us from droughts or floods. So therefore, uh, th this whole topic of isotope hydrology, which is of course very prominently um, featured here and also hosted an IEA, is, is one of those, uh, is one of the ways we can use to understand this better and to propose more resilient systems that will also be more yeah, in harmony with nature and with the earth system, because if we just build more dams, we will also just impact more on the climate. So it's an interconnected system. And the better we understand the system, the more sustainable we can be. So thank you for hosting this event today. And uh, I am really uh, um, excited <coughs> to have this topic also in the conference that we will have in New York next year. So there will be a big UN conference on water and uh, cryosphere is the frozen part of our water resources, so please make sure that cryosphere people are in New York next year. Thank you, Julia. Thank you, Johannes, for introduction. As I understand, you need to go to another event. And um, let me to continue, please, about the country-specific issues. I will present the second speaker now, Vaisidin Saidov from Executive Committee of the International Fund for Saving the RLC from Tajikistan. Vaisidin, what is your country experience of a glacier retreat? Thank you, Julia. Thank you for your question. First of all, thank you for invitation to participate in such important events which cover the problem. It's also very important for our regions, for our countries. Uh, as you may know, Tajikistan is a rich water country, but we are also climate change affected one because of our uh, high mountains uh, uh, country. One of the main indicators of this impact was the intensive melting of glaciers, which are melting rapidly. 
in the last century, there were more than 40,000 glaciers in the Tajikistan, which covering it consists almost 7-8% uh, of the total territory of Tajikistan. But unfortunately, due to the climate change impact, these glaciers began to melting and intensively, uh, and we are already lost one third of their volume. Also, more than 1,000 glaciers of Tajikistan have completely melted for the last several decades. Uh, maybe you are uh, aware that the world's largest continental glacier Svetchenko, with 77 kilometers, is located in Tajikistan. Studies show that in the last uh, 78 years, the Fetchenko glaciers retreated by more than one kilometer and its surface area has decreased by 44 kilometers square while it has lost more than 50 kilometer cubic in volume. The glaciers Tange has begun retreating by the 60 meters per year. Unfortunately, this process is actively going on and it is expected that by the end of the uh, this century, we will lost two thirds of the glaciers, our glaciers in Tajikistan. Thank you very much. I saw glaciers, my children saw glaciers, but I'm not sure if my grandchildren will saw glaciers because last future projections show that in less than 30 years, we will lose most of the glaciers in Africa and Kenya, and also in 50 years or less, we will lose all glaciers. Can I turn in Peru, please? I would like to present the third speaker, Daniel Martinez Castro, Vice Director of Knowledge Management and Capacity Building in National Research Institute of Glacier and Mountains in Peru. Daniel, what is your country experience of Glacier Retreat? Okay, Gl glacier retreat in Peru is a very big problem because, uh, as you know, uh, most of, uh, of uh, tropical glaciers are concentrated in South America. Practical, no, say like that. Okay, uh, practically mo more than 99 percent of uh, of uh, tropical glaciers are concentrated in South America, and most of them are in Peru practically 97 percent. Then uh, the uh, economy of Peru is uh, uh, highly dependent on, on glaciers. Uh, how it works? Okay, uh, in, in Peru we, we have uh, these glaciers act as uh, uh, okay. ice conserves the, the water in the glacier and uh, the, it has a, a seasonal behavior. In, in the winter, then the, the glacier grows, and in the summer, the glacier uh, lets the water go. Then the, the water in, in all the cities of, uh, for example, the Pacific coast and the, the Andean cities depend on rivers that come from the glaciers. Then, uh, uh, by now, glaciers are retreating in a, in a very accelerated way. For example, in the last 50 years, per, uh, Peru have, uh, has lost m more, of, uh, uh, more than 50% of uh, its glacier area. The, the glacier mass is not known because we have to, to make more measurements to know the glacier volume and mass. But we know that, that uh, according to the area, the loss has been very big, very, very great. Then uh, what is the consequence? The many uh, glacier originated lagoons have appeared. Then water accumulates on these lagoons. And these lagoons have been growing very fast. Uh, this has the consequence that many uh, accidents have uh, occurred because of rocks and uh, pieces of ice uh, coming down from the glacier. For example, in, in 1941, there was a big uh, disgrace in, uh, in Wara city. Part of the city disappeared. And in 1970, because of an earthquake, rocks fell also 
from, from my glacier and the, the city disappeared totally. Thousands of people died. Then the, the, this is a big problem. So uh, glaciers are important because they are part of the, of the cycle, of the hydrological cycle, very important part. They accumulate uh, water on the, on the lagoons in part of, of their, of, of their melting cycle. When they begin to melt, then they accumulate water. But when they disappear, this water uh, disappears also with, with time. On the long run, the, the, the melting of, uh, of glaciers will take, uh, have as a consequence a, a very serious drought problem for all the cities that are in, in, in the coast of Peru and in the, and in the Andes. Then some, we, we have to develop many adaptation policies. For example, protection. Uh, uh, from the 70s in Peru, they began to, to build uh, walls and tunnels to protect the cities from the deglaciating water, from, from this uh, kind of uh, uh, glacier originated floods called GLOF. And uh, also, uh, we have to, to develop methods of uh, cultivation of, of water underground to try to, to keep as long as possible the moisture of the, of the ground. Then uh, it has a, a multilateral uh, approach. We have to follow multilateral approach to, to try to, to adapt to this, uh, to this problem. In the long run, it will be very difficult to adapt. The amount of water will be much less than, than now because we will have water only from precipitation, not from glaciers. Uh, this water in the glaciers has uh, have accumulated during m thousands of years, and it will it will disappear only in decades, and uh, it, it will not recover until many millennia also again. Thank you very much. Thank you for highlighting us what glacier melting impact not only hydrological cycle but also social economic system and ecosystems. Please, let me to turn to the next speaker. Ms. Svetlana Krakowska, she's head of the uh, Applied Clim Climatology Laboratory in Ukraine in Hydrometeorological Institute and work as National Antarctic Scientific Center of the Ministry for Education and Science of Ukraine. In Antarctica, we have the long stations for isotopes and precipitation with the longest records. Please, could you answer us what impact is glacier retreat having on climate system in Antarctica? Uh, first of all, thank you that you invited me to speak here on glaciers. Glaciers actually, uh, it's part of cryosphere and cryosphere actually it's one of component of climate system. And of course, the biggest part of cryosphere is Antarctica. And uh, here I, for Antarctica, and as well for other glaciers, in fact, I want to highlight that it's not only water cycle, actually, but it's about energy balance of uh, climate system as well. Because if we have retreat of glaciers, we will have less reflectivity, again, of these glaciers, especially in such places as Central Asia or in South uh, America or, or in, in other, let's say, continents and as, as well as in Antarctica. And in this case, you will have much more open uh, land and uh, much more warming of this land and whole system. That's why actually Antarctica and as well as sea ice, for example, as, as other part of Cryosphere is uh, really essential. Uh, with uh, Antarctica, I, I would say that um, yeah, I, I've been in Antarctica and winter is there for a whole year, and it was in 97, uh, 98, and it was a year of uh, the very high El Nino. So we didn't have uh, at that time even uh, sea ice around our station, which is an, in Antarctic Peninsula region. 
Uh, at the same time, I now see it's, it's, it's exactly 25 years ago, in fact. So <laughs> I was this time in Antarctica. And uh, now I see new, new photos from this region. And sometimes I cannot recognize them because uh, our station is situated in in small island, actually with a small ice cap. And now this ice cap has much uh, uh, different shape, let's say. So we don't have these niches and everything, so it's just destroyed. Moreover, in our uh, this uh, uh, station, uh, we have around a lot of penguin nests. So uh, with this, actually, I, I, I want maybe to, to invite to, to show this. We prepared a small video, which, uh, which is by, called just Antarctica Warns. So just to explain how it's really have this climate change impact around our station in Antarctic Peninsula. <laughs> Thank you very much. Actually, it's highlight another important aspect about also pollution and contamination. We can, can consider what is happening now in Antarctica. As I know, this year you had the highest level of snow. Do we have a chance to regrow the glacier that is melting with the snow in Antarctica? Uh, well, uh, you know, actually, uh, uh, <laughs> I work on for IPCC <coughs> uh, working group one report, actually we have uh, together with Daniel, with uh, in, in the in the chapter actually atlas where we put uh, interactive atlas with different scenarios. So these scenarios actually predict that we will have much more precipitation, but this precipitation in this uh, Antarctic uh, Peninsula region will mostly will be in uh, in the in the type of rain unfortunately. And with this rain, we will have <coughs> much more uh, warming of glaciers as well. And this is caused uh, with uh, another problem, which is uh, caused like uh, atmospheric rivers. So when uh, actually this uh, big, um, big uh, movement of uh, very, very warm and very moist air goes from subtropic and comes to Antarctic region and goes over the Antarctic Peninsula with fern effect, and then you know about Larsen B ice shelf, which actually is dissolved. So there are many other problems. I mean, we, we will have much more precipitation, but I'm not sure that we will have more glaciers. And maybe to answer your question about this longest uh, actually data set, I was, yeah, I was measuring this, uh, this um, you know, I, I was taking these samples of uh, radioisotope analysis and I was wondering where they will go. <laughs> uh, because, yeah, we put it in small bottles, this water we took for one month, uh, all precipitation, then took small samples and sent them somewhere. And here I go, I met Julia here at COP at one of such events, and, and she explained me. 
<laughs> actually where, where our samples go and how it's important actually uh, our work to continue to do it in Antarctica, especially in Antarctica, to, to, to know how it will go with again atmospheric rivers and all other uh, phenomena we have in Antarctica and worldwide. Thank you very much. Because isotopes integrate much more information than just temperature and precipitation because we just look inside of the water molecule to understand what's happening with the whole system in Antarctica and around the globe where we have a lot of a lot of different stations and we cooperate with different countries. Thank you very much. And in, if in Antarctica socioeconomic um, issues of melting is not so probably evident in Tajikistan. What impact, what are the socioeconomic impact of glacier retreat and how local and regional e economies are impacted by seeding? Thank you, Yulia, for your question. Uh, actually, uh, glaciers are an important component of water storage, which is of particular importance for various sectors, including agriculture and electric generation. Glaciers retreat has been causing significant material and human damage to people and economy of the country. We have been observing intensification of floods, mud flows, landslides, droughts for the last several decades, which undermine our efforts to achieve sustainable development. Significant harm is being done by gloves, glacier lakes, outbursts, floods, which are the result of the intensive glaciers melting. The largest gloves has occurred in Tajikistan in 2015 in Barsem village of the Gornobadakhshan Autonomous Oblast. As a result of the glacier melting due to the high temperature and flow of mud coming from the mountains to the district of Gbao are affected by the mud flow. Six people were killed in the result. More than uh, 100 households uh, and 25 houses are destroyed in Barsem, Barsem village. Uh, as a result of the disaster. Also, another thing is that 60% uh, of the uh, water resources uh, comes from uh, Tajikistan and uh, Kyrgyzstan, actually. Uh, another thing is that Tajikistan produced 90% uh, 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 electricity generated in Tajikistan is by hydropower, which is very important for economical development. Uh, as uh, glaciers, as uh, um, reservoirs in the highland, uh, if we lost this melting due to the negative impact of climate change, it will be affected not only in Tajikistan, but in the downstream region also. Uh, for example, if we compare the Water availability per capita in Central Asia in 1960, uh, it was around uh, 8.4 thousand meter cube. Today, is can this indicator equals less than 2,000. It means that it's increased by four times. Uh, and in the future, if we observe such kind of increasing temperature, global temperature, I mean, indicator will be in the 2040, uh, around 1,000 meter cube per capita, uh, which will be water scale uh, region for whole Central Asia countries. Uh, even we are located, Tajikistan located in the down up, upstream countries, but we already observe this water security in the some regions. Of course, uh, these important things also coordinated by our head of the status uh, because during the co consultative meeting of the head of state in the city of Chorpon Atta in this June, the head of state emphasized that uh, importance of expanding interaction of and coordination in the field of the climate agenda and decided to approve the roadmap for the development of regional cooperation for 2022-2024 the concept of interaction between the Central Asian states within the framework of multilateral formats, and the final is the Regional Green Agenda program for the Central Asia. Uh, in our terms, the International Fund for the Saving RLC do a lot because we include the questions of climate 
changing water resource management in our agenda. And in this uh, direction, we are working with all uh, states, uh, IFA states members, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, uh, and Turkmenistan as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. We are also working with Tajikistan through technical cooperation project. And recently, we are establishing national laboratory facilities to apply isotope hydrology in order to understand where is the melted water is going and what consequences it has on the environment and socio-economic system. Because in Austria, for example, a lot of countries also, a lot of cities also depend on electricity produced by hydropower. And the part of this hydropower derived from the melted glaciers, what is melted. So it's the same situation also in countries like Austria and in other countries what rely on melted water from glaciers. Thank you very much for highlighting this important issue. Daniel, you already told about that for glaciers, it's not only affecting hydrological side, but socioeconomic systems. Please, can you tell us a little bit more? What does the socioeconomic impact of glacier retreat and how local economies are impacted? Okay. Uh, the impact on is, is okay. The impact on social economies is, is 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 very important, and it depends also on on the on the stage of glacier retreat, because when, for example, I I, I spoke about the water related issue, but the, it, there are other issues also. For example. We have uh, this this cycle of the glacier that uh, initially uh, produces lagoons and afterwards produces drought. But uh, the retreat of the glacier has uh, also uh, is is linked also with uh, pollution. Why? Because when the glacier retreats, then the water. Uh, the melting water come from higher altitudes, and some rocks that were uh, that before were covered with glacier are uncovered now. And the, in, in part of the glaciers, uh, uh, significant part of the glaciers, these rocks have uh, components components that are polluting. Then this water passes over these uh, rocks and pollutes. And the, the water of the lagoon become uh, acid, and it's no good for agriculture, not for drinking. Then uh, many lagoons that were formed by glacial retreat gradually are, are being polluted, and these lagoons are 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 bad for uh, for the health. Then, for example, the city of Huaraz, that is the the capital of Ancash, one of the more important departments of Peru because of the white Cordi Cordillera Blanca uh, is known as uh, the where most glaciers in Peru concentrate uh, has three rivers that uh, gave, gave uh, water two of, the, of them are contaminated already with, uh, with this acid uh, component and are useless for for the city, only one gets not contaminated. This depends on the soil, on the kind of rocks that are under the glacier. Then that's a big problem. In, in this case, what happens? That there is less water already. Even even if, if now we ha we are not still in the in the stage of uh, disappearance uh, of total disappearance of the glaciers in that region we already have conflict of water. Then we have conflict between different communities because of water. And that, that's a big problem. Even we, for example, develop uh, early warning systems. To develop this early warning system, we have to build towers, we have to install equipment, all that. And uh, as they are, uh, have been very hit by the drought, they blame these instruments for the drought. They say that, the, you know, the, the, for them, this uh, 
high mountains are, are gods. Then they say that we offended the gods because we install this equipment there and that's the reason of the drought. Then we have to, to work very hard in, with these people to explain them. And it's, very, it's very, really very hard. Then be, before beginning any project that includes installment of equipment, we have to, to, to work with the population. We have to go there. We have to organize workshops just to explain. So uh, we have to ask permission to them, from, from them. If not, they will destroy everything. The, it, it has happened already. Then uh, there, there are uh, very, very deep social problems now. In, in, this is in the Andean population, but this problem will extend to the to the big cities of the uh, of the Pacific uh, shore in the future. Then uh, this has to be addressed very seriously. To how how to solve this problem? Uh, maybe we have to to build dams to to use the water, the precipitation water. Uh, not to let the not to let it go to the to the ocean. It it, it has to be a, a multi-year plan for many for many time. But uh, it will be very very hard. Uh, it, it includes social work and then technological uh, solutions also. Thank you very much. Thank you. You highlighted about the pollution problem related to glacier melting, because normally we can see that what glacier melting is mostly water quantity problem, but we can see what it's also water quality problem. We applied uh, isotope hydrology in different areas also to understand what amount of melted water in rivers, because we look inside of water molecule and glacier melt generally have very low, it's depleted value compared to precipitation. However, we also look at the pollution component with time. We look at the Danube River, Danube River in Europe, but also impacted by glacier melt. And we found, you told what pH, it's become more acid. So melted glacier can also impact on acidification of lakes and probably an uh, ocean also. However, we found also, uh, additionally, we found what glacier melt impact on biological processes in river because it's bringing very cold water. Then limiting bi biological processes. So, please, I know what in Antarctica there is no kind of settlements, but Svetlana, please, can you tell us what are the socioeconomic impact of uh, glacier retreat in Antarctica from your experience? Well, fortunately, we have this continent not habited <laughs> yet. And uh, actually, if we speak about social, we speak about humans, of course. Well, uh, when we speak about humans in Antarctica, uh, the most population of Antarctica is scientists. And they behave better than uh, most population in the world, of course. Uh, nevertheless, actually, in uh, this region where we are, in the Antarctic Peninsula region and some other regions, we have tourists, and we have uh, actually fishing, uh, so it's uh, industry. And uh, with this, of course, uh, uh, this uh, glacier retreat and uh, um, des desalinization, so we, we have this water is less uh, salt. So with this uh, it impact on, again, on, uh, on this, um, on biological, um, um, uh, on, on, on different species there, and uh, on, on the chain, of food chain, let's say. So krill is, uh, is the most uh, important in Antarctic uh, region, of course, but it's uh, just uh, the main component of this food chain, in fact. So we can put it like this. So this, this is connection uh, on the so socioeconomic, let's say. Um, uh, but at the same time, I maybe, um, <laughs> I, I don't know, I guess... Uh, we need to preserve, of course, uh, Antarctica, and it, the, the video it stated very clear. At the same time, we need, uh, of course, to, to study it uh, better. 
So uh, we need to understand that uh, our study should uh, be in more, uh, how to say, uh, to put more, more places there uh, as preserved areas. And I know that uh, it's, uh, it's another, another international community like SCAR, Scientific Council on Antarctic Research, they do a lot of work on it. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, we still want to preserve Antarctica and to make it continent without borders and uh, one continent for science. And I hope uh, that we will not do the, any extraction <laughs> extraction of uh, fossil fuels, which we are talking a lot in this conference, in fact, and some, uh, some other minerals uh, which uh, people, I, I know that they want to do something with Antarctica um, underground, but I guess it will be better to make Antarctica uh, cover, co cover it with glaciers <laughs> than uh, with dust from this uh, mining or some other industries, which will just exacerbate the problem actually for all us in, in, in the whole world. Thank you very much. It's interesting to know what melting glaciers in Antarctica impact food security also and the uh, ecosystem and a lot of services, even it's not inhabitant, so it's inhabitant area, but still there is a huge consequences of melting of those glaciers, what in remote area, what they observe. But if you back to water security, there is a question, where is the melt water from glaciers going? What is happening with this melt water? Because probably if it's disappearing more and more glaciers. We have more and more water, but it's water not the same quality for drinking, for example. It's impacted even in the worst case by low pH value, by contamination. We have used isotope hydrology before intensive melting, mostly for ice cores. So it was drilled ice cores, including courses in Antarctica, and we look at the climate of the past. We looked how different atmospheric oscillations be behave what was the different hydroclimate condition? It was very well drought year or it was a flooded year. But now melted glaciers start to bring us much more information what we can trace. So we can trace water contamination. We can trace how and where water is going. Daniel, what is your experience? Where is the melt water from glaciers is going? Okay, in, in, the, in the case uh, of uh, tropical glaciers, as I said before, the, it's going to, to lagoons. And uh, from these lagoons, the uh, water goes to the underground. Then, uh, uh, if, if, if this process of uh, acidification, uh, coal acid, uh, ro rock acid uh, drainage, do, don't occur, then it, it feeds the, the lagoons and the underground. And uh, in, in, in many cases, this go to wetlands also. That uh, in Peru, there, there are a lot of wetlands that they accumulate also water, and they are very important for the hydrologic cycle. But now, uh, in, the, in the part of the, of the land, uh, related with glaciers, that uh, already the process reached the, the point of, uh, of uh, decreasing the, the amount of, of water, then these wetlands are drying. And you see the wetland, but dry. Then uh, that, that's a big problem. But for example, in the, in the case, that, that is the worst case, I think, of uh, the glaciers of the northern hemisphere, of the northern pole. In the northern pole, according to the IPCC uh, results, is heating very rapidly, more, 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 uh, more, more rapidly than the, the south and the Antarctic. And then these uh, glaciers and, uh, and frozen, water, uh, frozen ice on the water is, uh, is melting very fast and is, uh, is feeding the ocean water. Then it's changing the salinity 
that is very uh, very dangerous for for uh, for fish species species. Then uh, it's changing the salinity and, and it's uh, increasing the the level of the water very fast. Uh, but it, it occurs uh, much more on the north than on the south because. The Antarctic, the Antarctic is uh, the heating of the Antarctic is 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 slower, at least. But uh, then this uh, melting of water is causing different kinds of problems depending of 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 where of which glaciers we we speak about. Because uh, the water that melts from Peruvian glaciers is is not important. If we compare it uh, for the ocean, for example, for the for the level of the ocean is not so important as the water from the glaciers in the northern hemisphere. That is much more, and uh, it, it, it depends. But anyway, uh, we have all, all this problem. Is it, it's always dangerous <laughs> in one way or another. Okay. Thank you. We can see what glacier melt impact downstream water reservoirs like wetlands also very much and um, Vicedin as as we know what uh, 2025 was declared as the international year of glaciers preservation it, as it was announced by the president of Tajikistan what we can do to preserve glaciers for example in Austria they cover glaciers with a special fleece to prevent uh, melting during the hot period and it was estimated what it's prevent about 30% of the glacier depending on the year. However, each year is become more and more expensive and less efficient. Svetlana, what we can do to prevent glacier melting? Maybe it's not easy question to reply, but... Yeah, it's, not, it's uh, definitely... <coughs> It's definitely not easy question because, well, actually, uh, as, uh, as we said from the beginning, so glaciers, they are part of climate system. It's part of our cryosphere. So I guess uh, the easiest way is to just stop climate change. <laughs> so uh, it's the uh, easiest. It's not, of course, the easiest. Uh, I understand. But it's what uh, in our hands. I, I, I mean, since this climate change caused by humans, it's anthropogenic climate change. I, I believe that we can do it. Uh, if we are speaking about some, so it's, it's global view, let's say. If we are speaking about some, some local, some local, um, <laughs> I don't know, I, I, I can just say, yeah, you can, you can try do, uh, to preserve this uh, ice, um, I don't know, with some shadow, I don't know, with some covers. But anyway, if you will have uh, warmer, uh, uh, surrounding it, it will melt so <laughs> there is no uh, there is no easy way to to preserve this uh, this uh, glaciers but but you can uh, just uh, uh, follow the scenario of IPCC which actually goes to 1.5 or at least well below 2 degree and with this uh, these glaciers will grow again so with this climate it, we will uh, we will have uh, more more snow and the snow uh, after all uh, well maybe we will not see it I mean we as maybe even our not our grandchildren but at least at least uh, it will put uh, our earth on on right pathway and with this actually I, I want to say that of course um, from one point of view, this climate change, uh, okay, we can adapt for some, for some, uh, for some changes. The problem is, is uh, in speed of these uh, changes, in fact. So in uh, some past, uh, and you said about this uh, uh, ice cores, yeah, we can see that uh, in some past uh, we had even warmer climate on the Earth. But the question and the problem that humans were not on this planet. So, and uh, actually never we, we saw so rapid changes on this uh, planet and especially during one life of one person. So this is the problem, this speed of the changes. And uh, to preserve glaciers, it, maybe we will not preserve some of them, of course. But I guess now this is a question mostly to preserve 
humans on this planet. And with this, uh, yeah, I, I, I would like actually to, to, <laughs> to send everybody to, to IPCC key messages and just follow these messages it will help us. Thank you for this very important message so we can consider what we can reduce glacier melting only if we stop or sustain how power the growing of the temperature. It can help us. And please, Vice Dean, what is the position of Tajikistan about preservation of glaciers? What we can do? Yes, thank you. Uh, I totally agree with Svetlana. Of course, it's not an easy question how to preserve glaciers. But uh, you are right, it depends on every one of us. Because in the local, national, regional, international level, we need an action. Because, for example, if compare the before industry period and now, what is the greenhouse emission in every country? It depends on humans, that's why we can reduce by our action. We need especially Political leaders, they have to collaborate with uh, all other leaders around the world and in order to achieve this goal. Of course, it's not easy. As you mentioned, Julia, of course, it was initiative of our president to declare 2025 the year of international glacier preservation. We are working on this level. We are using the different platforms, existing platform. Uh, also, in the, it was actually... Uh, began in the frame of water and climate coalition leader where our president is a member of this coalition and during the first uh, meeting he announced about these initiatives and I hope the world community will support us and we will go to the right way and I hope we will get success thank you very much you thought what preservation is a big step towards unifying the world community. Even countries, if they don't have glaciers, but they can be impacted by glacier melt from the upstream in the other countries located. Thank you. And Daniel, what is the preservation measures in Peru? Did you try some and some been efficient? But what is your opinion about preservation of glacier melting? Okay, th there is a point that we still have not talked about is the, the, the role of uh, black carbon in, in glaciers. Because we really can do something. We, we can't stop, of course, glacier, glacier retreat. But if, if we control black carbon, we can lengthen a lot the uh, lives of glaciers. Because, uh, for example, we have uh, analyzed the differences in the rate of uh, deglaciation of different glaciers. It depends. On, on, on the wind, it depends on, the, on their position, if they are covered or not by other glaciers, by other mountains, for example. But they depend uh, very, very strongly on the, the uh, pollution from black carbon, because black carbon is a, is a, a heating particle. It, 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 it uh, uh, decreases the albedo of the of the glacier. The glacier, if, if the glacier was pure, it, it would uh, it would reflect the, uh, a, gra a great greater part of the of the visible radiation. But if, if it's covered by these light absorbing particles, this these uh, particles uh, absorb radiation and emit uh, higher higher wavelength radiation. Then they convert ra uh, solar radiation in heat, and it heats the glacier additionally. Then uh, in every place where a particle of black carbon uh, falls, it forms a, a hole in the, in the ice. Then it uh, uh, diminishes uh, in, in a big quantity the albedo of the glacier. And so it, it increases the, uh, the rate of deglaciation. De then we can control that because these these particles of black carbon are, are anthropogenically produced. They are produced by forest fires. Some some of them are natural, but many are produced by by man, and uh, also by cooking, uh, using uh, ca carbon or uh, uh, wood for cooking. 
by the the transport tra the, the transportation using fossil fuels all this produce uh, black carbon that is a, like a, a a component of combustion of, of no total combustion then in, in the in the case that uh, all transport was not contaminating not polluting uh, the and uh, in the case that uh, these forest fires were better controlled and uh, that there were programs of, uh, of electrical cooking or, or cooking using gas in the communities, we could reduce drastically the amount of black carbon and we, we could lengthen the life of our glaciers. Thank you very much. It's good to understand it, but to understand glacier melt impact, we need quite a lot of data because we can manage only what we can measure. So we can um, turn now to the end to our discussion with very important take home messages. Please, can I ask you to provide one message take home regarding what priority measures should be done to adapt and mitigate, but also to support the decision on water management on the climate change. Okay, the, the, uh, the measurements of, uh, the mitigation measurements are clear. We, we have to, no, not to emit so much <laughs> CO2 and, uh, and greenhouse, greenhouse uh, gases, of course. That's the, the most important. Also the agriculture, we have to limit the, the production of uh, cattle that uh, emits a lot of methane, that is very important. Uh, and this it takes uh, a lot of discipline. And uh, it's very complicated because uh, this discipline ha can be imposed by governments. And these governments are elected by people that don't want to be disciplined. <laughs> and then th th that's a big problem, but uh, it, it has to, it needs a, a conscious, of, in the people of, of the urgency of of the the measures against against the global warming, and the, I think it, 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 the people in general in, in all the countries have more and more conscious now than before, but uh, we have no time. <laughs> That's the problem. If we had the, a century more, no problem, but we don't have it. we don't have it. People, uh, uh, once they, they feel the problem of climate change in, in their uh, normal li lives, they, maybe they will change. But it's difficult for the people to, to renounce to a car or to, to pay twice for a car in case uh, uh, to, to buy an electrical car, for example, is, is, is difficult. Then uh, it has to be regulated by the governments, and the governments have to be regulated by the world <laughs> in, some, in, in, in some measure, no? Then uh, in, in this kind of meetings, we, it, 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 they are the meetings that should produce the solution. But uh, the, the goodwill of everyone is needed. If not, uh, we, we won't solve the problem. We, we can help as scientists, we can help as uh, electors in the countries to elect uh, the governments that that are uh, more sympathetic with uh, with the, the fight against climate change. But uh, the real solution can come from from uh, from the world. I think. Thank you very much. Because scientific community produce a lot of data, as I know. But this is the way what we need. To to translate science to policy. We need to find the common language. We need to act together to mitigate and, like Svetlana told, adapt to changing of our ecosystem, particularly by glacier melting. So Svetlana, what priority measures should be done to adapt and mitigate, but also to support the decision making? Well, uh, Actually, these priority measures, uh, there, are, there are many <laughs> measures. I, I even cannot uh, say uh, briefly what is priority, but uh, I guess pri priority is just to realize and really take it seriously. Uh, so first of all, and uh, 
on my on my opinion actually what we can do uh, as scientists as uh, scientists working uh, uh, for this uh, IPCC as well so we do this we communicate this science to policy makers and uh, this education and dissemination of knowledge this is really essential uh, and and what uh, I actually want uh, to say maybe uh, as concluding uh, that uh, of course we uh, we are on the earth we are in the physical world and we cannot change physical laws so we know that uh, our glaciers will melt if uh, the temperature will go over zero degrees of Celsius but what we can do we can change our laws political laws we can change our behavior and this is in our hands and this is what we must do again to to survive literally on this planet that's that's what I can say and this is priority to to realize it and then we, you will act as, as you said Thank you. So it's not only problem of science, it's problem of community. We need to act together, we need to get together and to discuss and to do some steps to reduce the climate change impact on glaciers and to reduce the temperature growth. Vice Dean, what is the situation in Tajikistan? What priority measures should be done to adapt and mitigate, but also to support the decision making? Yes, thank you, Yulia. Thank you, Yulia, for the question. Uh, as I said, uh, the glaciers is the main source of the fresh water in the Central Asian region, uh, and that's why we call them diamond of the highlands, and how we have to preserve them. Uh, it should be in the, for example, in our country, we started from the national level, local and national level. Why? Because we have to uh, take about glaciers uh, in our local uh, and national uh, levels than with other regional and international re levels. That's why Tajikistan uh, placed at, uh, attention on water resource management and glaciers conservation under the climate change condition because, as we know, water and climate it has close interlinkages. That's why we cannot say that the climate it has own problem and the water resources, no. Especially in the country region where the main source is the glaciers, main source of the water. That's why Tajikistan in the different years uh, adopted and developed several uh, program and strategic uh, documents. Uh, for example, in early 2010, the state program for the study and conservation of the glaciers of the Republic of Tajikistan for 2010-2013 was adopted. Uh, the second one it is the national strategy for adaptation to climate change uh, of the Republic of Tajikistan for the period until 2030. Uh, as the last one, also we have uh, closely actively work with uh, international organization. For example, in the in the framework of uh, Green Central Asia Initiative, we actively support and contribute to develop a regional document. It's called Regional Strategy for Adaptation on to Climate Change in Central Asia, which is started two months ago, and we are actively support and work on this program uh, to make our contribution because of this document is very uh, it's very on time. It's because. Uh, Tajikistan and all other Central Asian, it started from uh, mountain areas and goes to, I mean, water flows from glacier to the deltas, maybe say, to the Aral Sea, uh, which has in basin uh, five countries, including all Central Asian countries and plus Afghanistan. That's why we have to think new initiative and make new action global community needs increase the focus on defining new initiatives and strategies to reduce the negative impact of climate change to the water resource management also, as well as to glaciers. Uh, as you mentioned, in this regard, our president, Mr. Mali uh, Rahmon, during his uh, first speech uh, of the meeting Water and Climate Coalition leaders in March 2012, uh, 2020 first proposed to declare the 
2025 as the International Year of the Glacier Preservation. And in this regard, we are actively working uh, to prepare to the end of this uh, year uh, to adopt the General Assembly uh, Declaration. Uh, I hope we will uh, make this uh, initiative just we started and working with our uh, national and international partners and we actively work on this uh, project and it's almost uh, prepared by our permanent mission in the uh, United Nations. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you for the take-home messages and thank you for being with us today. We can understand what glacier melting is impacting not only the ecosystem, but impacting the socio-economic system. Its preservation of glacier is not an easy task, but we need to gather together and to work on it, to translate science to policy. Thank you, and thank you for those who have been online with us. Thank you for this event. Thank you.